definition, you can't be a psychopath until you're an adult. But there are studies of looking backward to see what psychopaths were like when they were children. And they often had some very disturbing behavior. And in fact, in order to make the diagnosis with confidence that you have a, an adult who has no conscience, who has no empathy for others, who doesn't really care about being good, you go back to their childhood and you see, yes, they, they enjoyed setting fires, they tortured animals, they were mean to other people. They, they never really had uh, tenderness, uh, interest in others, but they learned what it took to get favors. Uh, so a psychopath by definition nowadays is someone who is an adult, who has no conscience, who may or may not be sadistic. Uh, and, and, and that's an interesting addition, because in popular fiction, we're fascinated with these characters like Hannibal Lecter, who not only have no conscience, but they also enjoy hurting other people. Uh, but, but I would say children can be on their way but you shouldn't make the diagnosis until they've grown up. Uh, there have been some articles lately, a really fascinating one in the New York Times about kids and good parents who are just uh, uh, torturing themselves, trying to do the right thing with a child who is uh, manipulative, uh, unfeeling, destructive. My belief is that the, that the core concept in a psychopath is the absence of conscience. And you don't form a conscience until you're five or six years old. So you can't really tell until a child is that old. But between five or six and the time they qualify for adult classifications, yeah, you can see that somebody is is behaving and developing along that way. Now, you know, my friend and colleague, Robert Hare, I consider the world expert on psychopath. He really knows way more than I do and way more than most experts do. He has studied them. I tend to study the victim. I'm interested in a psychopath because sometimes victims have run into them and they can blame themselves for having an encounter with a person who behaves really like a beast. So at any rate, in order to rate high on Robert Hare's scale of psychopathy, you have to be both a psychopath and a sadist. If you're a sadist, it means you enjoy inflicting pain on others. Sadists sometimes come to psychiatrists when they're not psychopaths, but for some reason they've learned to enjoy inflicting pain on others and they feel very guilty about it and they want help in moderating that compulsive behavior. But you see, if you start out without a conscience and then having no empathy for the other person, you find out that you have power over other people. You can scare them. Uh, you can get them to do what you want them to do for you. Then I, I think of this kind of person as having stumbled into sadism and without a conscience, they can become a psychopathic sadist, and that's the serial killer. That's the person who rapes and kills for the thrill of it. That's a very dangerous predator. Well, what causes uh, the creation of a psychopath in the first place is open to huge debate and speculation. And there are people who study the genetic components, people who study the uh, developmental components in the earliest stages of infancy. Uh, so different studies end up with different factors. Uh, there's no single gene, single gene that makes somebody a psychopath. And what's startling is to find of brothers in the same family where one is a psychopath and the other clearly isn't. Some of those are fairly well-known cases, like one of the Columbine killers who really seemed to be psychopathic, had a brother who clearly was not. There are twin studies 
and they're not exactly concordant, but there tends to be a strong genetic component. So I, I think we're born with different building blocks. And if those building blocks don't build a conscience, a, an internal superego, a part of the mind that we can't locate anatomically, but we know what it does. It, it causes us to feel the sensation of guilt when we know we've done something that violates the rules that we believe in. If we don't have that capacity for feeling that feeling of guilt, that's the major part of being a psychopath. We don't have any stake in correcting our behavior. And some people believe they can teach that, but the jury is out on, on whether you can ever train a full-blown psychopath to be less than a full-blown psychopath.